السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أفضل الخلق وسيد المرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين uh, My dear brothers and sisters from the Islamic Center of the Santa Clara Valley السلام عليكم ورحمة الله May Allah as may Allah's peace and mercy be upon of all of you on these last ten blessed nights of Ramadan. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to worship Him in the most in the way that is most pleasing to Him. And we ask Allah to accept from us our salah and our siyam and our sadaqat in these last uh, uh, ten nights. Um, you know we we have um, we set out this Ramadan seeking Allah's mercy, seeking Allah's forgiveness and uh, seeking to be from those that Allah writes every night for people to be freed from the hellfire. Ya Allah, uh, free us from the hellfire on, on this night uh, and make us from those who leave this month uh, without any uh, sin and without any uh, blemish on our record. That's why we make dua in these last few nights. Uh, Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibu al-afu fa'fu anna. Say the Aisha when she asked the Prophet Sallam, if I know that if I I'm uh, making dua and and it happens to be Laylatul Qadr, what dua should I be making? And the Prophet tells her this dua Allahumma inna ka afuun to hibul afa fa'fu anna. Um O oh Allah, you are the one who pardons, who exonerates, and uh, you love to uh, to wipe out sins. And please, Ya Allah, wipe out my sins for me. And so we want to leave this Ramadan with a clean slate. And, uh, uh, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu he said, there is nothing uh, better that uh, is asked for than Al-Afiyah. Um, Al-Afiyah is to be uh, well, is to be healthy in all aspects of our being, of our body, mind, soul, heart. And, uh, and you know, we ask Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala to grant us Afiyah. And that's part of the reason why I'm here talking with you today, dear brothers and sisters. My name is uh, Suhail Mullah. I am the uh, director of the Khalil Center uh, in uh, Northridge, California, in the San Fernando Valley. This is our Los Angeles branch. The Khalil Center is a very important organization uh, in the American Muslim context. Uh, we are the largest provider of Muslim mental health services in the country. We have eight offices throughout the nation, one in New York, and uh, we specialize in treating um, uh, people for their uh, mental health needs. And so what that means is individuals who are suffering with uh, depression or anxiety or other conditions, for example, obsessive compulsive disorder, uh, people who just sometimes want somebody to talk to, people who um, have uh, relationship struggles, people who have marital uh, strife and difficulty and how common that is. Um, we help people navigate their marriage and, and, and improve their marriage. Uh, we, um, we, we deal with couples that are going through divorce and help minimize the harm and the, and the hurt in that process. And, uh, and we help uh, families um, find peace and tranquility by trying to improve those relationships and, <clears throat> and many other affairs that we help uh, people through. We have licensed clinical social workers on staff. And, um, and you know, we've, this organization has been around for 10 years. And we are unique because we use an integrated Islamic approach. Islam is part of our healing process. Uh, we help to heal individuals and families and couples by through the Islamic guidance that is there. Um, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala uh, first and foremost um, provided us guidance for all aspects of our life and for us to be um, healthy, uh, to be spiritually healthy and emotionally healthy it's very important that we that guidance is incorporated into our life. We cannot be healthy people, even though we may have, we cannot be fully healthy people, even if we have good relationships in our life, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in our life. So we look to make people healthy in a holistic uh, sort of way. 
So I'm going to show a video at the end of this uh, video that tells you about what Khalil Center does and tells you how you can support and will provide um, a, a links for you to be able to access uh, so that you can support this uh, incredible organization in your own uh, locality. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you all for your support. Uh, we have a launch good campaign where you can donate to or you can donate um, uh, on a dollar a day campaign. We, ha we have a one dollar a day campaign which is our uh, Rafiq status. You can be a Rafiq of the Khalil Center, a, a friend of the Khalil Center. Uh, you can be a Sadiq which is a $2 a day a donation that you, you're making, $59 a month, or a $3 a day, um, which is our Khalil status. Whatever you can afford to help us with, um, we, we, do, um, we do have a shortfall uh, in terms of our financial, uh, um, uh, you know, financially supporting the, our center, because some, some people come to our center and they don't have the ability to pay. And, and we, of course, we don't turn anybody away from uh, the help that we give them. So uh, so uh, we'll, we'll put this up on the slide after. You can also go to khalilcenter.com, K-H-A-L-I-L, center, C-E-N-T-E-R.com, um, to, to look us up and to learn more about us. And we'll share with you a video at the end of this clip. I want to um, share... Um, some thoughts with you today before uh, I leave uh, with you today. Um, and that is uh, one of the things, you know, in these times where um, uh, we are staying at home, we're under quarantine uh, in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, um, there um, are many people are struggling, by the way, we, our numbers have went up uh, because now two months in, uh, they, they are saying that in the stage two or stage three of this pandemic, mental health needs will, will, will rise. And we're finding that need already manifesting in the community by people coming through our doors and seeking support. Um, but uh, one thing I want to share with you and leave you with some hope today is um, five things that if we understand, then we will always be thankful no matter what. A lot of people are, are finding it difficult uh, to you know, to be thankful in the midst of this. Alhamdulillah, some people are very happy. They're in the midst. They're with their family, and they are, um, you know, they've spent more family time than they have a long time. But for others, it hasn't been that case. Now they're home all the time, and that means that maybe there's more tension. So I'm going to share with you five things today that if we uh, keep them in mind. It will always put us in a state of being thankful, of being shakir with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, month, the month of Ramadan is, a, is a, a month where the Muslim is complete. Our Prophet sallallahu said, Ajaban li amril mu'min. He says, amazing is the affair of the believer. Uh, and all of his affairs are good. And that is for no one except the believer. Because if a good uh, comes into his or her life, then he is thankful. And if difficulties come into his or her, her, his or her life, then he is he or she is uh, patient. And so patience and thankfulness, al-sabr wa shukr, are, are two of the primary mind states that we need to keep in our lifestyle. Ramadan, all of that comes together. Why? Because our days are full of patience, of sabr, fasting, even though we're, we're hungry, we're thirsty, uh, and we, we deal with that. And a shukr, where uh, we are, are grateful at night by standing in prayer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, showing that we are thankful for all that He has given to us, the blessing of the Qur'an. Uh, our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, he, he stood uh, at night and he would pray throughout the year. And people, uh, and say to Aisha, she asked him, you know, Ya Rasulullah, you stand, uh, your feet are swollen, and Allah has forgiven your past sins and your future sins. Why do you do this to yourself? And Rasulullah sallallahu he says, Afala akunu abdan shakura. Should I not be a thankful slave? Ya, uh, uh, should I not be a thankful slave? Should I not be grateful? So we, we get to taste all of that in Ramadan. As-sabr wa as-shukr. So this, uh, um, the, I want to leave you with these five things. Things that if we understand them, we will always be thankful no matter what. 
Number one, every trial, every trial that uh, we have, we understand and we know that the trial could be bigger. The test that we have in life, it could be bigger, it could be more uh, um, difficult. And we are thankful that is not worse. That the, the difficulty and the trial that we are going to, that it is not worse. This is the benefit of, you know, when people go to group therapy, they sit with other people who are also struggling in similar life situations, but you always see the person next to you. When you see it in somebody else, you say, SubhanAllah, I'm glad that wasn't me. Our Prophet ﷺ, he would teach us to say, Alhamdulillah, alladhi aafani mimma abtalaka bih. You know, uh, I, 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 I'm grateful to Allah. Uh, um, praise be to Allah, the one that has... Uh, has made me uh, free, that has made me healthy, that has not tried me with the difficulties that you are going through. That's the, you know, we understand the blessing that we have when we see others who are in a greater difficulty. And all you have to do is look at the news, brothers and sisters, uh, to see the difficulties that Muslims are struggling with in different parts of the world. Um, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, uh, La tanduru he said, don't look at those who are above you in socioeconomic status. They have wealth, they have this, they have that. Look at those of you that, look at uh, those that are beneath you. Those that have not been given what you have been given. And that is more suitable for you to then be thankful, as the Prophet Sallallahu tells us. So that's number one. Number two, we are thankful knowing that the musibah, knowing that the calamity, the difficulty, the test, the trial could have been in our deen. And we ask Allah's protection from being tried in our deen. We, we make this dua, Allahumma la, taja, la taj'al musibatana fi deenina. Oh Allah, don't make our test in our deen. You know, there were Muslims in different court parts of history who uh, in the time of the Prophet wasallam, the first martyr, the first shahida, the first one who gave their life, uh, for Islam, Sayyida Sumayya. Why did she give her life? Because she refused to um, uh, submit to what they asked, were subjecting her to. They tortured her until the point they killed her. Why? Because they told her, leave La ilaha illallah. Say that I worship you know, these stone and rock gods that, um, that our people have always worshipped. And she refused. And because of that, she was killed. But there, was other, there were others who were not able to stand firm and tall, of, uh, stand tall and firm in 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 that midst. So we at, we are thankful that our the fitna is not in our deen, the trial is not in our uh, deen. The third thing that if we keep this in mind, we will always be thankful no matter what, is that it is possible that the pain we faced in this life could have been in the next, could have been in the next life. Our pain here is temporary. You know, um, we get hurt whether it be physically or emotionally, that pain is temporary. It comes and it goes. Sometimes you have intense pain in the morning and by nighttime you're laughing. Sometimes a few minutes uh, you're laughing, uh, you, you know, and then just a moment later, sorry, uh, you're, you're crying and then just moments later you're laughing. This is a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Pain that we feel, even if it's intense emotional pain, we're still able to feel happiness. Uh, pain is temporary, and we're thankful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, He has put us in painful pa positions in this dunya, uh, rather than the akhirah, right? We cannot, uh, we cannot stand the pain of the akhirah. There was uh, the person who, uh, uh, who the Prophet he told, told, told us about that they were just dipped in Jahannam for one moment. And in life, they had everything. They, they had, you know, wealth and riches and so many things. But they went to the hellfire for just a split second. And they, and they, and they, and they, and they you know, forgot anything and everything good that they ever had. So we, uh, we're thankful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put pain for us in this life because that pain that we experience in this life is a means for us to not have to experience that pain in the next life 
Um, the Prophet says he says there is no uh, you know the prophet says there is no um there is no worry or anxiety or sadness or difficulty or even the uh, the prick of a thorn that somebody feels except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes that a means by which our um our sins are uh, are taken away from us and they fall just like the leaves fall from the tree as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi tells us. So SubhanAllah, what a mercy, what a mercy that we experience pain in this life but we un if we understand why we're experiencing it then ultimately it is helping us from having to experience it in the next life because the pain here is only temporary. The fourth point uh, that if we hold on to we will always be thankful no matter what. The struggles that we face now are predetermined. They're already been written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maktub fi ummul kitab. They've already been determined for us before we came into this world. These are things that had to happen. It was meant to happen. And that gives us comfort. You know, there's nothing we could have done. We couldn't have changed anything. We, would, we couldn't have made it any different. It turned out the way it was because it was written that way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا أَصَابَ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مِنْ قَبْلِ مِنْ قَبْلُ نَبْرَأَهَا um, That there is no one مَا uh, أَصَابَ uh, مِن مُصِيبَةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ There is no calamity that takes place in this earth or within yourselves um, except that it is in a book that had already been transcribed previous. So that gives us great comfort um, because these things uh, happened in our life. We were hurt as a result, but they had to happen. That was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan. And that, and that in and of itself will make us always thankful even in the, in the, in the midst of difficulty. And the last point, the pain we feel now is minute compared to the reward that we get later. The pain that we feel now is so small compared to the great reward that we will get later because we dealt with this pain in a graceful way, in a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted us to deal with. And you know, by the way, we grow as a result of our struggle. Uh, no pain, no gain, as they say. You know, we achieve Allah's pleasure when we deal with life struggles with dignity and grace. We grow as people when we do that. You know, it's like uh, taking medicine. The medicine tastes bad. We don't like it. It's really sour, bitter. Um, it hurts if it's a shot, for example. Um, but alt and if you take it even worse, people who get chemotherapy for cancer uh, patient treat uh, cancer uh, treatment, etc. It's it's really difficult. But ultimately, we become better as a result. And the same with life's difficulties. Ultimately, we become better as a result of going through them. So these are some thoughts to share with you about how to help, help us deal with life's difficulties, especially in the light of the, uh, the difficult times that we're living in. Uh, we're going to show you the Khalil Center video um, and, and put up a slide to show you how you can donate um, at the end of this video. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. So nice to be with you. Uh, please support Khalil Center in any way you can. We would love to for you to come uh, visit us uh, when Ramadan is over and uh, and to tell you about the great work that we do. Zakum Allah khairan. Assalamu alaikum.